As I turn around, I look for an okay signal from the crew members. They've given me that. We're running at about 40%, and all it is is a matter of releasing the brake, which I've done right there, and now the boat is moving in under its own power. It takes till it gets to be about 60 miles an hour before the boat actually comes up on a plane, and until that point, things get a little wet up in the front of the boat. Now there we've broken out of the spray, and right at the bottom of this moment, I'm doing somewhere between 60 and 70 miles an hour. And my intention is to go around the first turn, make a good sweep of the gauges, make sure everything is green, and then we're out there to do two conservative laps and make sure that the boat is cornering as well as we want to. That's what we've been striving for all day. Right at the moment, what we're looking at is somewhere around 100, maybe 85 to 100 miles an hour. Now the minute I straighten it out, and uh, we see the point of land, now we're up to about 120 maybe 130 and accelerating. As you see a little bit of spray coming off the sponsor, once we've eliminated that spray, that means we're over 135 or 40 miles an hour. Right at the moment, it's an absolutely incredible smooth ride. I've cleared through the radio how we want to set up for this next corner. Now I'm accelerating, so we pick the boat speed up to about 160 miles an hour, 155 to 60, and bend it into the corner. Now, right about here, the G-forces are somewhere around two and three Gs uh, on your head. And you see me tip my helmet in. It's because it's, yeah, there's an awful lot of strain on your neck at that point. Now we accelerate up somewhere right at the moment we're doing right now about 150 miles an hour. Now the boat gets a little aired out. As you can see, the horizon on the camera, uh, the boat does have a tendency to fly at that point. So that's one correction that we've got to make when we get back to the dock. I'll slow down just a little bit and then get to a point, now I'm accelerating again, so that we do nothing but test acceleration into the corner. Right now we're looking at about 150 miles an hour. The boat should scruff off somewhere around 15 or 20 miles an hour. And when I round this exit pin right here, we're doing 135, and it takes no more than one, two, three, four seconds. We're looking at 150, just that quick. An incredible shot with the King 5 cameras. We're going right to the point of land. You can see that it's kind of difficult to pick up the reference points, the buoys, when you're traveling that speed. They tend to blend themselves into the skyline back there. We're coming up on the entrance pin right now. We just traveled two and a half miles. Yeah, the one. Okay, let, let's, put, let's look at the other side of the coin. Now, I'm going to say, let's put myself in Jim Cropfell's position, driver of the Budweiser. I know that I've got an awful lot of straightaway speed. I don't have quite the cornering ability uh, that some of the lighter boats do. I want to get down to that first turn first, and I want to be on the inside. If I'm Mickey Raymond in the Squire shop, I think the same philosophy holds true. I've got to get down to that first turn with a lot of power on, and I've got to get down there before the turbines. If I'm Chip Hanna with the Atlas Van Lines, Anywhere you want to put me, guys, is fine with me. I'll get down there, and, and I'll pick you off one at a time if I can. But the advantage of getting down to that first turn first is that you can kind of dictate where you want those other boats to run. I think that if I'm in the other two piston boats, that's the strategy that I want to use. This Sunday marks the sixth time Steve Reynolds has piloted an unlimited hydroplane on Lake Washington. The Mercer Island native knows this course like the back of his glove, all of its subtle nuances. So uh, we'll go out on the course in our boat, and, and you'll show us all the subtle nuances. Oh, yeah, turns. yeah, the old bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah well, that, where's that, your boat? You ready to go? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's here. Craig, that's a rowboat. Uh, no, that's top story marine unit number three. Yeah, but I thought you had a, a big boat, you know, a great big white sucker. You know, that, that's Kairos. They're very big in the motor pool news. We have this. It's, it's a rental. Okay, but I'm not rowing. You want to not drag your hand in the water? Oh, sorry. Hey, wait a minute. Stop right here. Stop right here. Why? Well, this is where all the action starts. This is where it starts for the driver right here. This is we're hardly out of the pit. Yeah, but this is where I do the old engine won't start routine. You know, will it start, won't it start? I play around with it for a while. Hanair can be out there doing barrel rolls, but the crowd's watching me right here. And then right at the last minute, I kick it right in the tail and get the hell out of here. Go out on the course. Well, now here's where we set up for the start. The start's a very important element of the hydroplane race. Now, sometimes it's the only element. Like those heats when all the boats break down. You got it. So what's going through your mind when you're uh, milling around up here waiting to start? Well, now I can't speak for the other guys. Me, I'm looking for the shore to see if the cops have towed my car away or not.
Now, after the start, the second most important part of the race is the first turn here. Now, usually, the first boat out of the first turn is the first one across the finish line. That is, unless he breaks down first. Well, what are you, what are you thinking about here when you come into the first turn? Oh, the usual thing, you know, the position of the other boats, engine temperature, oil pressure, Immanuel Kant's theory of human perception, erotic symbolism in Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida, and then the wave action coming off the exit pin, you know, the usual thing. What, what happens when you come out of the first turn? Boy, oh, I step on the nitro. What, what is the nitro? I haven't the faintest idea. You know, I was always suspicious of the little smudge pots in the exhaust pipes, but the crowd loves it. And then, and then he said, you go into the back stretch, where you reach speeds of 200 miles an hour. You're kidding. Yeah, 200 miles an hour. I read it. Really? Right, I think so. Well, you gotta be crazy to do that in a boat. Is that what you were thinking about here in the back stretch? Oh, now listen. When you're doing 200 miles an hour with your tush a foot off the water, your mind is the last thing you're thinking about. Why are we stopped? I've, I've gone dead in the water. In the infield, I'm Greg Palmer.